Hi everyone. We are Group One, which consists of Tanner Johnson, Brady Griffin, B or Brianna Thompson, Dana Miller, and myself, Isaiah Wookie, and we will be going over UltraSoft Kleenex and the IMC plan, and what Kleenex has in store for its future. We will briefly summarize sections 1 through 5 in order to provide a clear understanding for where we are coming from, and in sections 6 through 12, we will be laying out a plan that we have for the future of Kleenex. Hope you guys enjoy the presentation. Hi there, I'm going to be talking about the company overview and would like to start off with a timeline. In 1924, when Kleenex started, they had over 40,000 employees to start their headquarters, which were located in Baltimore, Maryland. Kimberly Clark Corporation was the original manufacturer of Kleenex and still is to this day. You can see to the left with the advertisement from the 1920s that their newspaper ads display the product to be a better alternative to a handkerchief. These advertisements showcase that there are two main uses for Kleenex, to remove cold cream and to be best for blowing noses and disposable. The fashion of Kleenex was preferred by over 60% of users in a study that was conducted in 1930, which also showed that users found more useful for blowing their noses than a traditional handkerchief. By the 1940s, Kleenex and Kimberly Clark realized that they could use their popularity for product expansion, and this is when they launched the man-sized Kleenex and tissues for eyeglasses. Their popularity didn't stop there, and in the 1950s, they were official sponsors of a popular television show, which launched them into a nationwide recognition. By 1960s, there was a Space Saver tissue packs which came out, which are still used to this day, and as may, may some of you may know, they are the best for carrying in our backpacks during the day or taking on vacations. In the 1967, the iconic square upright box was introduced and is still iconic to this day. Right now, they have over $18 billion in revenue each year and they have outperformed in the last year in the last four quarters. Because of COVID-19, they have expected to increase their revenue substantially. And I'm pretty sure that by the end of this pandemic that we are seeing right now, that we will see that Kleenex has gone above and beyond to provide the best for their consumers. Now for a summary SWOT analysis of Kleenex, we will talk about all the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that Kleenex has. The first strength is market share with having most of the market share um, in the facial tissue world. Uh, second is the Kleenex and facial tissues are used, uh, that word is used interchangeably. And we are also really known for our care aspect, which we put a lot of time and effort into. Next is our weaknesses. We do have a high price point compared to the competition. We are in a very competitive market and most people have a negative relationship with facial tissue and being sick. Our opportunities that we have here at Kleenex are to capitalize on our care aspect. Like I said, uh, it's one of our greatest strengths, so we really have an opportunity to emphasize it. Uh, we can also be more appealing to a larger consumer base. This would be creating different lines that are cheaper and then maybe more luxurious lines that would be a little bit more expensive. We also have the opportunity just to create more products. With having such a large company, we are able to do this much more easier than a smaller company. And lastly, our threats is that generic brands can offer facial tissues of lower price. Next is that we aren't as environmentally sustainable as a lot of people would like us to be, which is something we're working on. And then lastly is our lack of design. Uh, to stay in this game, we need to keep up on our design and be relevant. So I'm gonna give a brief review of the IMC objectives that were covered in our previous slideshow and presentation. So the old way that Kleenex used to do things, uh, they were primarily focused on one product at the time when they were uh, first created. Uh, they placed magazine ads in the early 1930s and that was the first time they implemented their care strategy, which is stuck until now. They do have a social media presence, both Facebook and Twitter. 
Um, and their target market is specifically targeted at women right now between the age of 24 and 45. So the new way what we want to implement is a stronger social media presence, um, hitting a lot more platforms than just Twitter and Facebook. We also want to diversify the target market a lot more and include a lot more people. We also want to utilize the mailbox, so we want to go back to the old ways and reintroduce Kleenex as a brand that way. The market strategy for us is to strengthen the brand recognition and re realign the Kleenex name with the corporation, as well as assessing the target audience strengths and expanding that audience to men using stronger social media presence. To begin, I want to start with the enhanced social media presence and the at-home mail initiative that we want to begin. The key strategy for this initiative is to mainly use Facebook, while also being complemented with Twitter and Instagram as the main social media platforms that we would like to use in on your initiative. Facebook is super important basically due to the fact that the majority of our target demographic, which is going to be the slightly older generation who use Kleenex more, are going to be more inclined and more user-friendly within the Facebook platform. I want to complement it with Twitter and Instagram simply because Instagram has a great, is paralleled really well with Facebook because actually Facebook owns Instagram. And so I think that if we're able to use imagery, which I'll talk about later as part of the initiative, as well as using Facebook to connect with that target demographic, I think that we'll see a huge jump as far as what we want to get that specific message across as to why and where it needs to get. And so what needs to happen and where we need to do to create this brand identity awareness is we need to take the fact that consumers see any tissue as a Kleenex and change that into, oh, that's a specific brand of of tissue paper that I enjoy more than the other ones, and that is Kleenex. And so in doing this, we need to reassociate our brand, and that it can be done by the social media, the print advertising, and in general, just that in-mail advertising. To establish a company, once again, the, the key message that we'll use to target that audience and create a brand awareness that is more directly identified with the brand itself is super key in this entire initiative. And this is kind of the process that we see it going. Hi, I'll be going over the market research segment where we will cover some statistics and current and past information regarding the market growth for our brand Kleenex. The market for Kleenex is constantly growing. We hold about 40% of the market share. And along with that, about 170 million people in the last year used our brand Kleenex. The market in the next year is predicted to grow about 2.5%, which goes right in line with the last 10 years where it has grown every year from 2 to 2.5% every year. Recently, we've started to focus more on environmental friendly products in order to attract more consumers and please more people in order to make our customer base larger. Last year, a cool fun fact is that 255 billion, 360 million facial tissues were used. That's more than just Kleenex, but that's a really cool number and we contributed heavily to that. That being said, there are some great opportunities for us as a brand to take advantage of and increase our brand awareness. On to the target audience for Kleenex. They are currently targeting women between 25 and 54 years old. This is so that they can um, get most of the people that um, buy for their families and that being older women, because uh, usually they'll have kids or that they'll just buy for themselves or for their significant other. We think this is a great uh, segment to really target, but we also think that we should be targeting more of the decision makers in the family. This could be both men and women, uh, but the people who actually go to the store and buy the goods. Um, so whoever buys groceries or uh, is just the one to go to the store more, we really want to target them because they will be the ones that are actually purchasing our goods because we you don't really go to the store just to buy Kleenexes unless you're super sick. Um, we also want to try and shift to target more 
of new mothers, uh, this would be an awesome way to create brand loyalty by uh, sending care packages to hospitals and so that when they do have, when there are new mothers that have kids, they the nurses or, or just the hospital can give uh, the new mother this uh, package, this care package from Kleenex themselves with a nice card and then a bunch of different sample products so that next time when they go to the the store they're more apt to buy our goods because that they they know that they work and that their child isn't sensitive to them um, and this will really create that brand loyalty that we are looking for up next I will be covering the online media as well as the social media plan that we as Kleenex have for our company here in the next year. So first off, we are going to start a COVID-19 support. We will be allocating a percentage of the revenue that we make to supporting the fight against coronavirus. We will also be looking to make partnerships with social media influencers so that we might be able to increase our social media presence. Because while we're a big company and a lot of people buy our products, there's not too much of a following on social media such as Instagram and Twitter. We also plan on partaking in some product placement, looking for some good movies that would have a good connotation when our product is seen. This would get our brand out there and allow more people to know about what we do and what we care about. Not only that, but we plan on making our website quicker and easier for shopping so that we might be able to have links with some of our most popular products able for you to buy right away. We also, with all of our social media and our website, plan on taking back our name and making Kleenex the brand that we are selling and not just the facial tissue that everyone's gotten so used to calling a Kleenex. In our public relations campaign, I would like to start off with how we plan to meet our objectives and what those objectives are. We want to keep our target audience and our social media plan in mind when we are doing anything related to our public relations because public relations should reflect our overall goal for the marketing campaign. Using social media platforms, we want to create content by showing our sustainable and ethical side. Especially now during COVID-19, we can see that more consumers are appreciating the hard work that companies are putting in to help with the COVID-19 situation. We also want to be communicating and commenting to our consumers, and this all plays along with having a really open dialogue with our consumers about how our products are made and how we can improve. And having that open communication even through a social media platform is the best way. We also want to facilitate a loyal customer base that will be really formulated through our social media because a lot of people today, social media is how we get our reviews and how we build that loyalty to our certain products and consumptions that we use. And using our social media platform to create that open dialogue and use it to build this customer base for brand recognition is the most important thing. We also wanna make sure that we're checking in, making sure that we're doing our evaluations and with each other and with our media and our marketing campaign. But this all plays along with how we are going to do it within our time frame and how we're creating conversations. And that is going to be the biggest part about it. We also want to make sure that throughout all of this, the public relations wants to focus on creating that brand recognition that Kleenex hasn't had in the past and creating that brand recognition comes along with the direct name. So if we can get more and more people to realize that we are an independent company and that we provide the best facial tissues, then we can succeed. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about sustainability as well as our ethics plan. So as far as sustainability goes, small changes equals a big difference. So one of our main ideas, we're gonna to try to reduce the waste in our packaging systems. Um, this allows room for more product, as funny as that sounds, even just eliminating, eliminating a little bit of space in the packaging can help to allow room for more product to go out. This was successfully implemented in the baby wipes in the Kimberly Clark family, which is a part of Kleenex. 
Um, they reduce their packaging by as little as 10% in thickness, and that increased their capacity storage by 30%. And that doesn't really sound like a whole lot, but when you think about it in the long-term scale, just by doing this annually, they save 500 tons of paper waste, which is an insane amount. Now for our ethics plan. So we want to maintain our image of care. That's what's got us to be so successful and that's what's going to continue to keep us successful moving forward. We want to continue to make sustainable choices, whether it's packaging or anything else along the production line and manufacturing components as well. We also want to act with integrity and responsibility in everything we do, um, whether it's dealing with our customers, dealing with um, our employees in the manufacturing process, all the way down to once our products are out and maintaining that relationship with the customers and being open to suggestions and always allowing room for growth. We also wanna respect our people, the people and the planet. So making these choices may seem like a small step, but every time we make a smart decision, it's affecting the world a lot more than we know. So making these cutbacks on packaging waste, paper waste, plastic waste, all these different things can really make a huge difference for not just the people involved, but for the world also. In the timeline, I will be covering how we will be implementing our marketing strategies that we've covered in the previous slides and also when we'll be implementing those as well. In our timeline, we will be releasing new strategies about every three months. First of importance, COVID-19 support fund. As this is happening right now, we want to get this rolling as quick as possible in order to support the fight against coronavirus. As well as that, we want to make a couple changes to our online shopping website in order to make it quicker and easier to access since most people are staying at home and making purchases online currently. In the next three months, we plan on releasing some limited time offers on our website as well as our social media in order to see how consumers react to those limited time offers. After those three months, we plan on making some partnerships with social media influencers, as well as just trying to broaden and make our social media presence larger. In the next three months, we plan on partaking in some product placement, finding commercials and movies where our product might be able to be shown quickly where people will remember it. Not a not only do we want to partake in product placement, but we want to find movies and commercials that have a good connotation. So our product also has a good connotation. And last, through all of those segments, we would like to take back our name. Because Kleenex has been the universal term for a facial tissue, but now we want to change that to make Kleenex our own name again. When looking at a large company like the Clemente Car Corporation, it's important to understand that their marketing budget is most likely much larger than a small business's maybe, allowing them to spend a large portion of their money on ads and social media that may not be accessible to smaller income companies. Kleenex should allocate the largest portion of their budget to their social media campaigns, as that is where they will be gathering their demographics and analytical data. The data in our preliminary budget is derived from a 15% annual revenue that's used for a marketing budget, which is a pretty normal marketing uh, percentage for large companies that are in consumer goods, which is what Kleenex is a part of. Uh, Kleenex's annual revenue last year, um, in, 20, in 2018 actually, was 18.5 billion. If you take 15% of 18.5 billion, that's 2.775 billion. If you divide that by 12, you get 231,250,000 a month. Our preliminary budget is in a three month span. And so if you multiply that by three months, you get a $693,750,000 budget for each three month period. We've decided to allocate about 300 million to social media advertising, 60 million to video advertising, about 15,000 to blog advertising, about 46 million in market research and about 20, 21 million in marketing recruitment. We believe that these numbers are somewhat accurate due to the idea that the social media advertising is gonna be by far our largest and the video advertising would be that second largest. The third largest would be that market research and then the fourth largest would be the marketing recruitment, which all in all equates to about 
380 to 430 million dollars per each three month period, which is actually below the amount of money that could be budgeted uh, using the 2018 uh, revenue of Kimberly Clark. We believe that Kleenex should implement and evaluate their marketing plan every three months. We believe this because it is essential for Kleenex to evaluate brand recognition that its consumers have with it in a short frame manner in order to give a better sense of how the marketing campaigns are working and where they need to focus their efforts next in order to get a better outcome. The evaluation should include a detailed overview of how to get the ad campaign over those three months and how it was affecting consumer behavior. By administering surveys every three months that evaluate brand recognition to see if their overall view of the brand has become less generic, and more brand loyal. The survey should also include a detailed demographic section to better understand which demographics are moving toward the overall goal of total brand recognition and a large target audience, or if there still needs to be work done with specific demographic in order to reach that goal. Our step-by-step -step process begins by reading the social media analytics to evaluate whether the desired target market was reached, Read into social media analytics to evaluate whether the target market and following had an upslow in growth, and then generate the social media analytics and evaluate, administer a survey, and figure out the target and largest demographic market possible that is listed in the social media campaign, designating the questions to pertain to brand awareness and demographic understanding. Then we would evaluate the survey response after two weeks and incur whether the ad campaign had was successful in changing brand awareness in specific target market or if more targeting needs to be administered to specific demographics in order to strengthen brand loyalty and generate a larger following. In all, if we if Kleenex is able to go through all of those steps um, in order, they should figure out what target market they have, whether or not their ad campaign had been working and whether or not the brand recognition um, had been understood. And it if their target market had grown and if the brand recognition had also grown, that would mean that there would be a successful ad campaign. Thank you for watching our presentation on Kleenex. If you guys have any questions, please just leave them in the comments below. And we hope you enjoyed.